Hey, it's Professor Grabowski, and this video will tackle Associated Press Style, which is the writing style commonly used in journalism. Now, using a style guide is probably nothing uh, new to you. Uh, different types of writing follow different style guidelines. For example, in your other college courses, you may be required to adhere to the MLA, Chicago, Turabian, or APA style guides. Um, but in journalism and public relations, we have our own style guide, uh, and it's known as Associated Press Style. Uh, note that it's abbreviated uh, often as AP Style. Of course, no matter which guide you're going by, style rules can be tedious. But if you aspire to someday work in the media or PR, you must know Associated Press Style. And more immediately, if you want to do well in your journalism classes, you need to know AP Style. Here's why it's important. Strictly following a particular usage style provides consistency, accuracy, and clarity in grammar, punctuation, and other language issues. Um, and the AP knows all about the importance of consistency. Uh, the Associated Press is the largest news organization in the world. They have reporters and bureaus all over the world, and thousands of newspapers, TV news shows, uh, and radio stations use their stories. So to ensure that all of their reporters all over the world uh, are following a consistent writing style when they produce their stories, the Associated Press developed a style guide known as the Associated Press Style Guide, and they update it regularly um, to keep up with the times and, you know, with new language issues that emerge. Now, while some publications, such as the New York Times, have their own unique style guide, the vast majority of newspapers, magazines, and press releases follow the rules of the Associated Press style book. And because communicating with the media is a significant part of public relations, PR practitioners must know and utilize AP style as well. In general, AP style aims to be totally accurate, clear to anyone with a high school education and inoffensive. So for example, curse words are typically avoided. Uh, AP Style aims to do all of these things while being as succinct as possible. Uh, please note that AP Style differs significantly from style guides typically used in other courses, um, such as uh, in non-journalism courses. Um, so the APA Style Guide, for example, and the Oxford Style Guides are very different from the AP style guide. Um, so in order to master news writing and journalism, you need to know Associated Press style because it's a, a different type of, of style than the style guides you're probably used to. Uh, so I suggest reading some of your AP style book every day. You should keep it handy and refer to it often. Um, now, I'm aware the AP style book contains hundreds of rules. Um, but some of them come up much more often than others. Since you're new to journalism, I don't expect you to memorize everything inside the style guide, but you should at least remember uh, common style issues. So in this video lecture, I'm going to cover 15 of the most common AP style rules that come up. You can expect to regularly use these rules when writing stories. So I expect that you will know them well and apply them. Uh, students in my class will be tested on these rules. In addition, when you do your story assignments, I expect you to follow these 15 rules, otherwise you will lose points. So without further delay, here are 15 of the most important and commonly used AP style rules that you must know, or what I like to call Professor Grabowski's top 15 list for Associated Press style rules. I will also provide some examples uh, to illustrate each rule, so please pay attention to the text on the screen uh, so that you can see how the examples are typed. Rule number one, use a person's full name and title the first time you mention him or her in an article. For example, write Terrence Ross, comma, professor of communications, not Prof Ross, um, once people have f been fully identified, refer to them by their last name only. So after you identify Terrence Ross initially in your story, you can just refer to him by Ross 
or by a pronoun such as he or professor in subsequent mentions. Um, also, do not use courtesy titles such as Mr., Miss, uh, Mrs., uh, or Ms., um, except in direct quotes or where needed to distinguish between people of the same name. Uh, only use doctor if the person works in healthcare. Do not use doctor for PhDs or professors. Using courtesy titles may be polite, and the New York Times uses them uh, in their stories, but it is not AP style. Here is rule number two you should know. Capitalize formal titles uh, when used before a name. For example, um, write Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Very long titles may be shortened or summarized unless they are essential to the story, but the shortened form uh, doesn't need to be capitalized uh, because it's no longer a formal title. It's just kind of like a more of a common noun. <clears throat> so for example, you may use spokesperson instead of vice president for public affairs and communications. But uh, if it's appearing before a name, you lowercase spokesperson, whereas you would capitalize vice president of public affairs and communications if it appears before a name. Um, when the formal title follows a person's name, so if you write it after the person's name instead of before, then you lowercase it. Uh, when you have uh, general titles or descriptors such as, you know, actor Matt Damon or student John Smith or activist Greta Thunberg, those get lowercased. All right. So general titles such as actor, student, activist, uh, lawyer, uh, they do not get capitalized. Rule number three, for dates, um, if you're just referring to a month like September, uh, you write out September, you don't abbreviate it. But if you have a specific date, such as September 2nd, you abbreviate the month. If it's a month that gets abbreviated, note that only certain months get abbreviated. Uh, so uh, January, uh, February, um, August, September, October, November, and December, um, or it might be easier to remember the months August uh, through February, they get abbreviated. So January is J-A-N period, February is F-E-B period, August is A-U-G period, September is S-E-P-T period, October is O-C-T period, November is N-O-V period, and December is D-E-C period. Uh, however, the months March through July, so March, April, May, June, and July, don't get abbreviated. You always spell them out even if you have an exact date. Uh, now, when you are writing the numbers in dates, such as September 1st, uh, we actually don't use the, the ordinal part, the, the ST. We just write September 1. So not September 1st, we just write September 1. For September 2nd, we would just write September 2, not... Uh, September uh, 2 ND. Uh, so don't use ordinal numbers such as first, second, or third. Um, and uh, so basically to apply these two concepts, if you were to write the date February 2nd in AP style, uh, well, February gets abbreviated, so it's FEB period, uh, and then you would have the number two. But when you're only referring to the month or the month in the year, Spell out the month, even if it's one of those months that gets uh, abbreviated otherwise. All right, so if it's February 2020, you write out February and then 2020. Rule number four is about writing numbers in your story. Uh, generally, you want to spell out numbers zero through nine and use numerals to express numbers 10 and higher. Note, however, that numbers used at the beginning of a sentence um, are spelled out. Um, no matter what the number is. So for example, if you had the sentence 524 students attended the conference, you would spell out 524 rather than write the numbers 524. Uh, there is an exception to this rule. Um, like I said, the numbers and dates are always expressed numerically. Um, and uh, for example, as you can see on the screen, if you have 2020 was a bad year for everyone, uh, even if you're beginning the sentence with 2020, you use the numeral there. You don't write out, you know, 2020, you write 2020. 
Rule number five concerns writing people's ages. Uh, you should use numerals for all ages, even for ages younger than 10. Uh, this is another exception to that aforementioned uh, number rule. And when you use a number like an adjective, for example, uh, if you're writing about someone who's 19 years old, so you describe them as, you know, the 19 year old uh, college freshman, for example, you would include hyphens um, in that phrase. So there would be a hyphen between the number 19 uh, year and old. Otherwise, don't use hyphens. Uh, and for an example, see the sentences on the screen. <clears throat> Rule number six. For percentages, use numerals for the number and then the percent sign for percent. I repeat, do not spell out percent, use the percent sign. This is a fairly recent change to the AP Style Guide, something they changed in the past couple years. Um, so for example, uh, see the examples on the screen. Moving along to the next rule, let's discuss how to write time in your stories. To indicate time, use numerals and lowercase letters uh, with periods. See the examples on the screen for 9 a.m. And, and 6 p.m. on the screen. So you have uh, the numeral 9, then lowercase a period, lowercase m period. You have the numeral 6, then lowercase p period, and lowercase m period. Uh, put a space between the numeral and the uh, a.m. and p.m. And um, Exceptions for this are noon and midnight. You can either say 12 p.m. or noon, or you can say midnight instead of 12 a.m. But do not say 12 noon or 12 midnight because that's redundant. Uh, the reason why you might say noon instead of uh, 12 p.m. or midnight instead of 12 a.m. is people sometimes get confused about what time is 12 a.m. Does that mean, is that during the day or at night? So if you say noon, then people know it's during the day. And if you say midnight, they know you're talking about 12 at night, which is 12 a.m. <clears throat> okay, here is rule number eight. Spell out abbreviations or acronyms for organizations the first time you mention them in a story. So, for example, if you're writing a story about Nassau County, about Nassau Community College, the first time you refer to this uh, college in a story, you'd write out Nash Nassau Community College. Um, but after, if you refer to this uh, Nassau Community College again in your story, on those subsequent references, you can just call it NCC. Um, so basically, the idea is that um, not everyone might understand what an acronym stands for. So the first time we introduce it, we write it out. And then after that, we can use the acronym. To give an example that's related to Adelphi University, uh, if you're talking about the university center on campus, a lot of people on campus just refer to it as the UC. Um, but if you're new to the school or you don't attend the school, you may have no idea what the UC is. So if you're talking about the university center in a story, the first time you mention it, you would write university center. Um, thereafter, you could just refer to it as the UC. Note, there are some exceptions. Uh, if an organization is better known by its acronym, uh, such as the FBI or the CIA, you can just use the acronym on the first reference. But keep in mind, these acronym exceptions are very rare. There's only like a few uh, things that you would use the acronym for rather than spell it out on first reference. Uh, and FBI and CIA are among the few exceptions. So um, it's best to, to always spell out organizations on first mention when in doubt um, before you refer to them by their acronym. <clears throat> Rule number nine involves capitalization. In addition to being an associated press style role, this is also a basic grammar role. Uh, you want to capitalize names of proper nouns uh, such as the name of specific people, and also capitalize the names of proper places and things. So, for example, the name Mike, the country Canada, or a school like uh, Garden City High School, those are proper nouns. They refer to a specific person, a specific place, uh, a specific school. So, those words all get capitalized. So, uh, note that in Garden City High School, garden, city, high, and school, the first letter of those words all get capitalized because they're proper nouns. However, if you're referring to a common noun, 
like you just say the man or the country or the school or the college, rather than name a specific man or a specific school or a specific college, then it's a common noun and it does not get capitalized. Uh, when in doubt, use lowercase. Rule number 10 addresses how to write addresses and stories. And you know, you want to pay attention to the screen uh, for this so you can see the examples because it's a little tricky. When you have an exact address, such as 1 South Avenue, which is Adelphi's address, or 55 Main Street, uh, you abbreviate the street, avenue, uh, or boulevard when they're used with a specific address. So street gets abbreviated as ST period, avenue as AVE period, boulevard as BLVD period. Uh, you get the idea. Um, but if you don't have an, an exact address, if you're just referring to a street name or an avenue name uh, or boulevard name, then you don't abbreviate them. You would write out Main Street. You would not abbreviate Street. You would write out South Avenue. You would not abbreviate Avenue. Uh, something else to be aware of, uh, sometimes streets uh, are named after numbers, right? Like you might have a street called First Street or Sixth Street. Um, well, if the street is first through ninth uh, is for their street name, then um, spell it out. However, if the number is uh, 10 or higher, then use numerals. Uh, so for example, 9th Street, you'd spell it as N-I-N-T-H. However, 10th Street, right, that's 10 or higher, you write the numeral 10, 10, and then T-H. Uh, also, if you have an exact address, a brief, and it has compass points, right? Such as a uh, northwest, uh, southeast, west, north, uh, east, west. You get the idea. Um, then you can abbreviate them if it's an exact uh, address. So see the screen uh, for the example so you can better understand what I'm talking about. Rule number 11. When you're writing the name of a state, such as New York uh, or Pennsylvania, Always spell it out in your story. Don't abbreviate it. Don't use the postal code abbreviation. Um, so write New York, not NY. When referring to the United States as a noun, spell out United States uh, the first time you use it in your story. But if you're using United States as an adjective or as part of an organization's name, right, such as the U.S. Department of Justice, or if you're mentioning it for the second or third or fourth time in your story, you can just use U period, S period. Okay, we're almost through uh, my top 15 list. Let's cover rule number 12, which pertains to how to refer to websites in your story. When you're referring to a website, you want to use the name of the website rather than the web address or the, the URL. For example, write YouTube, not YouTube.com. Uh, write New York Times or not New York Times.com, or you could say the New York Times website. Um, keep in mind that a URL is merely a source's address in cyberspace. So, for example, when you cite sources, uh, saying Adelphi.edu instead of Adelphi University would be the equivalent of saying according to One South Avenue in Garden City instead of saying according to Adelphi University. You wouldn't do that, right? You wouldn't refer to um, something in the physical world by its address, you'd refer to it by its name. So you want to do the same when it comes to cyberspace and internet addresses. Refer to the name of the website um, rather than the URL. Rule number 13 concerns punctuation. And this is both an AP style rule and a grammar rule. Uh, for periods, you use a single space uh, after the period at the end of a sentence. For commas, uh, do not use what's known as a serial comma or an Oxford comma. So, for example, if you have a series of names such as John, Paul, George, and Ringo, there would be no comma after George and before the word end, as you can see on the screen. Rule number 14 pertains to how you punctuate quotes from uh, sources in your story. Uh, and that's basically just a repeat of what I covered in my previous lesson on quotes. Remember, uh, at the beginning of a quote, you need to have quote marks. And at the end of the quote, you need to have quote marks. Uh, punctuation goes inside the quote marks. So you can see the uh, examples posted on the screen there. 
Finally, we have my last rule in my top 15 list, which pertains to money. When referring to money, dollar amounts are always expressed as numerals and the dollar sign is used. For cents or amounts of $1 million or more, spell the word cents, million, billion, trillion, etc. Uh, please see the examples on the screen. Now, I realize I ran through this quickly and it will take time to, to really get used to these rules. To help you with that, I recommend you read and reread the top 15 list I posted on our course website. Uh, I also recommend you do practice quizzes on AP Style. I've posted many practice quizzes on our site. Associated Press Style can initially be annoying and difficult to learn, but it's important to know. And if you put in the time and effort, review the rules over and over and do those practice quizzes, you can eventually master it. Well, that's a crash course on Associated Press Style. This has been a presentation by Professor Mark Grabowski. Thanks for watching.